Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Potato, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and Amber Lynn Reed has returned to YouTube after a brief break, so we're here to cover it all. And joining me today is Potato because his sister Judy is striking. He, she said, oh, Amber Lynn Reed's potentially gonna talk about S-E-X? I just can't do that today, Dad. I just can't do it. Actually, I don't know if that's really true at all, but she really didn't want to sit in the chair today. And I'm inclined to just give old girl whatever she wants because I love her so much. So she's welcome to not sit there. And in the meantime, between time, Poe loves to be by my side at all times if he can. So he's happily taking over her role today. But I don't want to take too much time talking about whoever, whatever. I will say if you're sick of Amberlynn, I did post a non-Amberlynn read related commentary video yesterday if you want to go check it out. But in the meantime, between time, a lot of people said, Zach, are you going to cover Amberlynn's rebrand? And I said, well, yeah, but also like one community post doesn't feel like it's enough for a whole video, so I'm gonna wait until she actually posts the video and we'll talk about it all at once. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, recently Amberlynn Reed posted both on her community tab and on Instagram that she is undergoing yet another rebrand situation type of deal, which I don't really understand, but let me just read the community post for you and maybe you'll understand or maybe we can try to find some place of understanding together. So a couple days ago, she posted important new Instagram username and new YouTube content. Somehow I highly doubt that it's going to be anything new, but, <laughs> but new, new YouTube content. Starting a new series on my channel of hot topics, stories about me, tea about others and myself, advice from yours truly, Who's getting advice from Amberlynn Reed? On what? <laughs> on what? I'm trying to think. The only thing that I could think she was any kind of expert on at this point is scratch art. Like, what am I getting advice from Amberlynn Reed on? And also, if you're at the point in your life where you're like, let me ask Amberlynn Reed for some life advice, I got questions. But she goes on to let us know that she's going to be covering sex stuff and everything and anything else. Absolutely nothing off limits. Nothing, <laughs> there's nothing off limits. Cause just the, the other week you were saying you wanted people to stop asking you about your ex. So I guess now that you need a new idea for content, like questions about your exes are gonna be fair game, I'm guessing, maybe. <laughs> I'm sure it will because that's the only thing that really drums up true genuine drama on your channel these days. Anyway, she says, send me what you want me to talk about, i.e. I don't have any ideas and I am not super mobile right now, so please let me know what I should talk about and fill time with on my channel. She says, I only will be choosing topics, questions, etc. from my Instagram DMs. They're open for all. Not true. I'm still blocked on Instagram. So uh, if I'm blocked, I can't, I can't message you there. So not open to all, open to some, <laughs> open to some. You're welcome to block me though. I really, you know, that is something I've changed my mind on over the years. I really support people blocking and filtering out whatever they don't want to see on the internet. At this point, it's for your own peace of mind. Anyway, she says, so message me there. And then she shares her new Instagram username, Velvet and Honey. What in the rupee core are you doing here, bestie? We all know that <laughs> that there's a famous Canadian poet named Rupee Core who has a famous poetry book called Milk and Honey. And that's, that's, I think, what a lot of us saw when we saw that, right? Like, <laughs> it's very clear that that's where she's going with. But I have to say, after being on social media for so long, Amber Lynn really has no genuine concept of how this works. Why she keeps changing her Instagram name over and over and over again when, like, she should really be focusing on, like, if we want to talk about a true rebrand, like, the best thing she could do for branding purposes is to make it something consistent across the board. All of her social media be consistent across the board so people can find her easily. If I'm going to Instagram trying to find all my favorite pictures of Amber Lynn and all of her great Q and A's on her Insta stories, I'm not gonna be searching for somebody named Velvet and Honey, cause first of all, what does that even have to do with Amber Lynn Reed? What about her says Velvet and Honey? 
When I look at her, neither of those words are things I would associate with her. Maybe she did scratch and art, door and dash, wifey and babe. Like, like maybe if she did literally almost anything else, but velvet and honey are not words I would associate with her, okay? Second of all, like, just put something like Amberlynn Reed. Like, the whole point of being a social media influencer, content creator, is that people on the internet can find you. I rebranded all of my social media, like, a couple years ago at this point, just so they would all be the same. You go to Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, my handle is the same on every single one of those platforms, The Zachary Mike, just so you can find me, okay? I did have to get a little bit creative because I couldn't just pick Zachary Michael. It wasn't available on every platform, but like, from a branding, marketing perspective, it makes no sense to constantly be changing your name so people can't find you. This was always a criticism I had for Chantal and her YouTube channel. It just doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. So anyways, I'm so curious about what we're even gonna get from this. It, to me, it doesn't seem like any actual new YouTube content. It seems like just a marketing a Q&A a little bit differently, right? We're putting lipstick on a pig here. It's the same fucking thing we've been doing just with a new name. And, you know, we don't even have to wait that long to find out what it's about because yesterday she finally posted a new video and it's called How She Proposed, Wifey Taking Down Subreddits? Question mark and Beginning a Foster Care Experience. So Raw, episode one. Which I do appreciate her little like tongue in cheek naming of this new series after an iconic Amberlynn quote where she goes, this is so raw, you guys, fuck. Uh, <laughs> I'll put in the clip if you've never seen it before. But also just looking at this title, I'm so confused. How she proposed has to be about Becky, which I thought we were gonna stop talking about Becky, but Becky's the only person that ever proposed to Amber Lynn. Why she keeps putting Becky's name in her goddamn mouth, I don't understand when Becky seems so over Amber Lynn's bullshit. Like of all the exes of Amber Lynn's, Becky's the most over it, okay? She <laughs> She is, she's done. And then wifey taking down subreddits. Well, one, I don't know that wifey has that kind of power, but if you didn't know, a lot of the Amber Lynn Reed subreddits got taken down, I think over the weekend, or at least that's when people noticed. But two, didn't she ask us to fucking stop calling wifey wifey? So why is she calling wifey wifey now? I I'm so sick of her! I'm not. I'm gonna keep watching. And then the last thing she says is the beginning of her foster care experience, which that recently, people have said, like, hey, like, we would love to learn more about who you were as a kid, like, some of your experiences as a kid and, like, how it got to you to where you are. And she said, no, I, I, I've thought about sharing that a whole lot and I just won't share it because I know everybody's gonna nitpick it and I don't want people to like dissect something that was like very serious to me and like rip it apart and tell me how I'm lying and all of this. And at the time I said, wow, what a great, a great attitude and a great idea. Like, especially if that is something you really cherish and like don't want ruined by the internet because don't forget, she just had this whole video where like she blamed the viewers for ruining everything she loves. She blamed the viewers for ruining her love of scratch art and her earrings and coloring and poetry and whoever, whatever. And so now, and now she says, you know what? I know I said all of that and I know I said I would never share this experience because I didn't get a want to get it ripped apart but now here she is offering it up on a platter so I originally wasn't going to react to this whole video I was just going to go watch it and pull out the things that seemed interesting but so many people and th this doesn't happen as often these days okay but so many people reached out and said Zach this is reaction worthy I need to see your thoughts your feelings your whoever whatever as you watch it so I'm gonna try to deal with the hot lights and no AC I do have a little fan going and sit through this 28 minute long video for y'all because 
I love y'all, and I will do what I can to entertain you today. So after all of this is said and done, let's just get to get to, shall we? Hey guys. Hey. <laughs> so welcome to So Raw. So this is a oh, new so segment. Raw. Um, I don't know. <laughs> a, new, like a, a new segment, as I said, uh, a rebranding of Q&As. Wanna be podcast, but it's like not a podcast. It's like a podcast if you bought it on Wish. So. <laughs> This is not a podcast. Stop trying to make your Instagram Q and A something they're not, bestie. The reason why I chose so raw as the uh -huh. title is because of this video clip. This video is so raw, you guys. Fuck. I didn't. I don't even have to listen. Amber Lynn just say future Zach a lot of work editing it in. <laughs> Now I'm not going to. I'm not going to because now I know that she already is going to put it in, so I'll have to do that. Wow, Amberlynn, you look at you saving work for me. This is one of my most famous quotes. It you guys sure is. You have um, quoted me yeah. for years now on YouTube, and that's one of the ones that is a popular one, or obviously situation type deal, or the obviously. fact that I say moments a lot, obviously. and books is good for the brain, obviously. which is honestly one of my favorites, or mental things is it's scary. Hard. It's scary. You know, just some <laughs> other ones to throw in there. Sure. But it's so raw. This content is gonna be so raw. Oh, this is, is it? Me spilling is it? tea I've never spilled before. It's yeah, also, who, she said she's gonna spill tea on people. The only people in her life are her exes and her current girlfriend. How how much tea can she spill that we haven't already heard? I'm I, I'm curious. I would like to hear something new. Some topics, advice, questions, opinions, my take on things, like news. Literally News? Everything and anything. What I don't need. No. I do not need Amberlynn's political commentary on anything happening in the world right now. That's the last thing I want to come here for, to be honest with you. If you want to give me topics to talk about, go to my Instagram. Um, I do have a new Instagram username. I know a lot of people thought that I just like disappeared off a line, thought that I deleted my Instagram. I did not. No. I just changed my nobody, username. Also, so my username also was, nobody thought that. Also, I don't know that anybody thought that. It's a velvet dot and dot honey. Uh -huh. Velvet and honey. So you so can go there, DM me. My DMs are open for literally everybody. So did, why? But did, no, but did you, but did you unblock me though? Because listen, if you didn't, then it's not open for everybody. Let, let me just go. Let me just go see. Let me just go see. Wait, did she unblock me? Wait, get the fuck out. Wait, get the fuck. She really, no, y'all, she, y'all, she really unblocked me. She really said my DMs are open for all. Well, shit, she has just put me in my place today. She has just put me in my place today. Velvet and honey, um, that is a question that I have gotten recently. And it's just simply for aesthetic. Um, aesthetic? I have a few other ones, Blank and Honey. I just love the word honey. Um, this is it's so just dumb. It's like an aesthetic word. It's this pretty. This is so I don't dumb. You guys know the song, but I like my girls like I like my honey. You know, sweet, selfish. So I. I love that song. But yeah, no rhyme or reason, simply just aesthetic reasons. I hate that. I, I hate all parts of that. I hate every single part of that. I, it's so cringe. <laughs> I mean, do whatever you want. You can call your Instagram whatever you want, but that, like, grow up. <laughs> like, I don't, oh. So the first thing we're gonna get into is how did your ex propose to you? So Becky? I just wanna say that during my time doing So Raw, I I will be talking about my past experiences. This is, this is so dumb. This is my story. This is my proposal story, and I should be allowed to say it. This is my proposal story, so I, I'm going to say it even if it shits on people that I said I would stop talking about. I am a human being with experiences, sure. as is everyone. Sure. And I don't want 
to shy away from things that I've been through just because... I, I don't want to shy away from things, but I'm purposely going to say shit to get uh, people riled up and go, go message Becky and bother Becky. Someone else was involved. That's silly. That's not only silencing me, but it's... Yeah. Sil silenced with your 203,000 subscribers and currently this video sitting at 34,000 views. But yes, you silence. Don't silence Amber Lynn. Were you silent or were you silenced? It's taking away my human experiences. So I don't care who is involved. <laughs> I'm not shading anyone. I'm just talking about an experience it's, where I was engaged. I've actually been- It's so funny because you want to share human experiences about Becky who you're no longer with, but you won't even share human experiences about your current girlfriend because you want to protect her privacy. Huh, interesting, interesting. So we can't share your current human experiences because you're worried about the privacy and how people will treat your current partner but have let's just go on for it and share all the things about our exes who who didn't who chose to no longer be in a relationship with you <laughs> like are you are you fucking kidding me or like that's your logic right now i mean truly share whatever experiences you want because that is your story and honestly truly Becky knew that she was entering a relationship with a YouTuber and Becky like actively chose to be a part of Amberlynn's YouTube channel for a long time. But her logic right now is I can keep talking about Becky because that was my human experience, but I won't share things about the girlfriend that currently lives in my home because privacy. Been engaged twice. The first time was when I was 17. So... I, I don't even know if that really counts. Sure. We can maybe talk about that some other time. Just about almost two years ago, I was engaged. So, and I kind of want to share how I let's go. To, let's rather um, unique, if you will. So, unique! Right. Unique! Okay, Beyonce! Unique! Dreams of how they want their partner to propose to them. I know I do. Uh -huh. I'm very vocal about it as well. I feel like if Ooh, are you, you have are you a verbal top certain dream, or if you have like a certain ring that you want, or a way that you want to be proposed uh -huh. to, let your partner know. And so you said, get me multiple rings, and and not just because one didn't fit my finger. If they do it, that's great. They listen to you. If they don't, well, that sucks. <laughs> So I've always been super vocal about how I wanted uh -huh. to happen. Like, oh, I'm she is a verbal much, top. I like to be personal. I don't like no public proposals as sure. sweet and as claiming as that is. Like you're literally letting everyone know, like this is my woman. Like I love that, but I'm also super shy, and I know it's hard to believe, but I don't like the attention on me. I actually <laughs> hate it, which is. Uh because I am a YouTuber, but I promise. Listen, I don't, be I don't believe that just because you're a YouTuber that means that you want to be the center of attention at all times. Like, I don't believe that's true for everybody that likes to make content for YouTube, okay? I do believe that about Amberlynn, though. <laughs> I do. Have you, you, we've watched your videos. We know how you are. You, you like it to be the center of attention. And listen, claim that, girly. Claim it. Claim it. You want your woman to to shower you with love? Claim it. Your girl does not want no public proposal. But I do want it to be romantic. Like, uh -huh. you know, some petals, so some can, candles. Could you just get to the part where she proposes then? Beautiful music. Like, I want to be looking good. Maybe right after a date night or, you know, just like super romantic. I'm talking like so cheesy that uh -huh. we're just both pepper jack cheese. Like, yeah, I, I need the pepper jack cheese metaphor to leave <laughs> this is like the 12th time she's used it get, get, go consult with Rupi Kaur about some better metaphors our best life like I want cheesy I want things that you see in stupid uh -huh. romantic movies like that's what I want but how I was proposed to <laughs> I was sitting in the living room okay it was about 2 a.m. and the perfect proposing I time I was like actual grandma chic I had my floral moo moo on. Okay, work. Living my best life. Work. Don't Fashion. Don't get showered that day. I can't tell you what I was doing. 
probably binge watching some YouTube moment. Who knows? And I remember it being January 13th because- oh, You know, I thought it was going somewhere else there, but okay, I'm glad you picked a date that wasn't the sixth. My partner thought that she wanted to change that day for me because years prior, that's a day that I got broken up on, like where <gasps> my heart what? broke. All right, so now we're bringing destiny into it? No, no, I do not know. I, do you really think Becky would be like, oh, the day that destiny broke up with you, I'm gonna propose to you. <laughs> the day that destiny broke your heart. To say that their whole relationship, you know, a lot of people, their critique of the relationship Amberlynn had with Becky, was that Amberlynn was still in love with Destiny. So so bringing that into all of it, that there's a lot of things to unpack there. There's a lot of layers of that onion to unpeel. So she wanted to change that day for me into something special. That, that sounds like a lot. I get where your mind frame's at. It's, it's a good mind frame, but it's also kind of weird. All uh -huh. the your heart was in a good place, but it was in a place that I, I don't know. I don't know. It was just weird. Okay. So I'm in my moo moo. You know what though? I feel like in the past also now that I'm thinking about this, she would never she would never share anything about the proposal cuz she wanted that to be personal to her, to her and Becky. And now it's clear that she couldn't share that proposal because it's clear here for me so far that she didn't think this was a good proposal. And that would have really ruined the fantasy that she was selling us on YouTube at the time, which was her and Becky were so in love. It was the perfect relationship. And now we're seeing why she didn't share this because it wasn't everything she ever wanted and more in a proposal. Not showered, hair greasy as per usual. And all of a sudden, <laughs> right. like, if you're if you're getting mad that Becky proposed to you while your your hair was unshowered and greasy, like, when was she supposed to do it at the time? Honestly, like, w you know what I'm saying? She comes out like she's also in her pajamas, like just living her best life. We both got the greasy right. hair. Just okay, like, don't bring her, don't bring Becky's hair into this. Separate lives in the same home. I don't know. There was definitely a disconnect, especially... <laughs> the revisionist history, because at the time, it was, we are so in love, this is everything to me. When she walked out of the bedroom with something in her hand, and it was like this clear box, and it was small, and I could tell something was in it, uh -huh. and she just sat down across from me and handed it to me, and I looked at it, you guys. It, <laughs> What's so funny? This is embarrassing, but it's like an actual true situation. I'm so stop talking about this as embarrassing. You were so excited to tell us all about getting proposed to on fucking YouTube. Get the fuck out of here. I the Becky slander today. I don't have time. I do not have the time. It was a tiny pink vibrator with a engagement ring wrapped around it. Like, it was like, say this is the vibrator, it was like on it, like that. And she looked at me and said, will you have sex with me for the rest of my life? And I said, You're telling me, you're telling me this sexless relationship you allegedly had with, with Becky, because I when they broke up, Amber said that that like the past like year or so or more had been sexless. So you're telling me that that's how Becky, I, something about this ain't adding up for me. I'm, I'm this close to getting that calculator out because you're telling me y'all didn't have a whole lot of sex and it was just like you were roommates for the last part of your relationship. But you're telling me that Becky was like, I, I'm this person who I haven't had sex with. The way I'm gonna propose to them is by asking if they'll have sex, only have sex with me for the rest of their life. And also, when did Amber Lynn get so comfortable talking about sex on her channel? It used to be the case that she couldn't even say the word, uh, the name for the mascara, the better than sex mascara. She couldn't even say the word sex when she brought that up. I, mm, mm -mm, no, mm -mm, something about this is not adding up for me. Nope, I don't think so. I am. Um, we hadn't had sex. 
We had sex one time. Okay, thanks for confirming last, this. Like, three years. So it was, it was a definite. I don't know. It was very I, really disconnected. No, um, this is I, this is so fucking shady and not adding up. I this is I don't. If this is true, I don't like the way that you're presenting it. Like Becky's so awful and bad. Maybe if it is true, okay. First of all, let's let's talk about if it is true. If it is true, maybe Becky was trying to hint at something. Maybe Becky was trying to say, "Girl, we need like I want to be with you. I'm committing to you, and we better start having fucking sex again." But I just don't believe knowing Becky <laughs> from what we've seen of Becky that this is how Becky would do it. I I am not buying what you're selling. If, if it is true also, then like parts of it are true. But like, it just doesn't make sense to me. You're telling me that this sexless relationship inspired Becky to propose that way? I'm not buying it. And I feel like I'm sick of you just trying to throw Becky under the bus right now. I'm so annoyed. And listen, I'm not the world's biggest Becky defender. Like I said in this video, already today like I really do believe that Becky knew what she was getting into Becky was a viewer of Amberlynn's before they got in a relationship and Becky also like continued to sign on for being in the videos but I think Becky's made it clear at this point that Becky is trying to disconnect from Amberlynn and I am just so sick of it I, I think it's just like basic respect like yes you can say whatever you want about your own experience but Becky's made it clear that she's not a fan of it but that's how it was proposed to I know a lot of people have been asking about that I thought I shared it before I you sure I didn't shared it before you sure didn't live stream you did but you didn't because it was always personal and something you wanted to keep to yourself up until this point and I know not everyone sat through those live streams because that was like a whole different era that was it like sure was. boring. But it sure the question was. is answered. And I will say, everything comes from a good heart. I like to believe that. Okay. But just because something comes from a good heart doesn't mean it's not awkward. Okay. So uh, well, nothing about this video is coming from a place of a good heart. Okay. You're this. <laughs> I'm sick. Of, this is malicious that you would even share that story. Sure. We have an advice column asking Amber Lynn, you know, advice with Amber Lynn if you're, because I have all the advice. If you're asking Amber Lynn for advice, you better be trolling because otherwise, like, I got a lot of questions for what, where you're at in life. This, whatever question this is, it better be a troll asking a question for advice because I can't imagine going to Amber Lynn for any kind of advice. Advice. I'm very much the type of person, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> the advice that someone needs from me, I'm talking to my teacher this on Snapchat. Technically, it's my professor. I had this professor last year, and we were this three is, then. This is made up because who in college is still using Snapchat? Or is that a thing that you young people are doing? Because <laughs> I stopped using Snapchat years ago. And I thought that was it. Until I found out I had them again this semester. And we pick things right back up. This is dumb. This time on also, Snapchat. Also, that's such a, that's so fake because I don't know about y'all's experience in college, but like when I was picking classes, I could see who my teacher was going to be. I could see who my professor was going to be. I mean, sometimes at last minute those things would change, but this story is adding up. I'm 21 and she's 45. Okay, but that's a consensual relationship. I will say it's not in the terms of like at a college, that would be a concern for like Title IX issues. And that would be an issue because there's clearly a power dynamic there. I'm telling you way too much about this. Sure, it's unethical. And I didn't find anything too wrong with it until I found out she's married. Help. Okay, why let's would, just digest this. Why would this be something you would ask Amber Lynn about, though? What experience does she have in college? Her her two semesters of, what, criminal justice? <laughs> why would she, why would Amber Lynn be an expert on this subject? 21 and 45, that's a huge age gap. Like, gigantic. Okay. But you both can drink alcohol legally. You guys are both adults. What does alcohol have to do with any of this? She's your professor. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that not only, like you said, that's unethical, but she can get fired, which I think that she should, because I don't think that students 
and professors should ever have that type of intimate relationship. Well, first of all, where did where did intimate where did intimate come into this? This person said they were talking on Snapchat, which is an unconventional way to talk to a professor. But also, like, I was friendly with with professors that I had in grad school and undergrad and, like, talked to them and communicated to them as the, if they were humans. Now, if they did say intimate and I just missed that, then, yes, that's, that's a problem. Because that just gets messy. Um, especially, like, it's college, bro. Like, if you're falling in love with a student, you're not going to... Who said anything about, about love? Books, like, or their work or anything like that. I feel like it's just gonna be super messy. And they're married. I don't fuck with no cheaters. Like they're actually married. <laughs> I, I love I love moral high ground at Berlin Reed. So I think that you honestly, like on a moral basis here, you need to talk to the head of the college. <laughs> the Let head of the know. college. Save those snaps. She she really is she's really showing her her knowledge of how higher education works. The head of the college. You could just go straight to the president of the university. No, it's pretty simple. They're married, they're your professor. Go to the authorities. You might go, think <laughs> go to the authorities. Call the cops. Amber Lane giving the best advice today. But they deserve prison time okay Pr really. prison time for talking to a student i i'm gonna have to when i edit this back i'm gonna have to listen close and see if she's if this person said anything about intimacy because i didn't hear that i heard we're talking on snapchat so i have been asked a lot to talk about my foster care experience sure. and honestly i i have tried so hard to like do whole videos dedicated to that but it would take a lifetime um a lot happened during my whole foster care era, but I feel like to maybe work my way up to talking a little more about it, we'll talk about the first few hours after I was taken from my parents. So I uh, appreciate that she's sharing whatever story she wants to share. I'm probably going to skip over this for the record and go over to whatever the next topic is. I'm going to listen to it just to be sure, but I, like, I'm not trying to critique her traumatic trial childhood. So I was in elementary school. I was like eight or nine years old. And I remember getting called into the office. I do want to say before I share the story that a lot I have, there's like holes. It's like Swiss cheese. Okay. So the cheese is the story, the experience and the memories, but they're- Okay, just real quick. Why, why, why is everything compared to cheese? <laughs> okay, that's it. That, that has to be the last thing I say about this, but why is every story related to cheese? You probably noticed a skip, and now we're ready to go on to her next question, uh, which while she was saying all of that, I was thinking about how she now is doing this where it's the Instagram DMs, so we don't actually know what people did or didn't ask her about. So just keep that in mind as we continue moving forward. The time, But yeah, that was the first few hours, things that I actually remember. Do I still like Trisha Paytas and what is and my current opinions on her now? So I don't know if you guys know, but I used to be Trisha Paytas stan. We know. Like, I was we, obsessed with her. We now. know, that's why literally the question was stated, do you still like Trisha Paytas? It implies that at some point you did like Trisha Paytas. All her books, all her, anything that she was selling and doing, uh -huh. I would watch, I would read, I, I would get, I would buy. I don't know what it I was, recall. but I was like I recall. obsessed. Then frenemies happened. When I tell you frenemies was one of the most entertaining things that I have ever seen, I'm not joking. Frenemies, iconic, like so iconic, but it made me see Trisha Paytas in a completely different light. The Int interesting interesting that it was frenemies that ended your standum for <laughs> Trisha Paytas because honestly frenemies was what I think well I know a lot of people started liking Trisha again because of frenemies and then once she like ruined things with frenemies they went back to not liking her but there were so many things prior to fren frenemies to not like about Trisha Paytas. In fact, like, I ended any kind of, like, enjoyment I got from Trisha Paytas 
way prior to her being on Frenemies. Uh, I, that's well documented on my channel if you want to go see all my reasons for not liking her. But the, the amount of, like, communities she offended even prior to being on Frenemies, out of control. Which, am I surprised that Amber Lynn still liked her despite all of those things? No. She's somebody who sits here... I do not know what's happening above my home. Do you hear that creaking? But no, I'm not surprised that Amber Lynn would not care about all of those things that Trisha Paytas did because Amber Lynn's somebody who still like defends the the poor choices and things that Chantal does on, on a regular basis, you know? You know, it wasn't the fact that Chantal was a bigot that made Amber Lynn stop liking Chantal. It was that Chantal said she had cankles, you know, and, and it sounds similar with Trisha. It's not all of the the racist, bigoted things that Trisha Paytas did. It was getting in a fight on frenemies. The things that she would do, the things that she would say, the things that she would lie about, the gaslighting, the way that she treated Ethan, completely changed my opinion about her. It was the way she treated Ethan, not not her bigotry. I don't think that she is a good, genuine person, and that's just how I feel. Okay, based work. On I mean, she's not. I mean, she's not. And listen, I'm, everybody comes around at a different time, so I'm glad you're here with us. I'm glad we're on the same page now. But how many things did you excuse before you got there? Completely stopped watching Trisha Paytas. I am no longer subscribed to her. I don't watch her. I do know that she's pregnant. And obviously, I wish nothing but health true. for her and her family true, and her true. baby. I'm really happy for her because I know that having children has always been hard for her. And the fact that she found someone who loves her unconditionally, or I'd like to hope so, that's hard for me to say because I know that she has abused him physically and I'm pretty sure mentally and emotionally oh, oh as well. Oh my God. It's just hard. If, if you... <laughs> First of all, th this man has only been in her life since Frenemy, so how would you know about what, I, like, I don't know anything about that, so it, it may be happening, it may not. I, I really don't watch Trisha Paytas like that. I get all of my news about Trisha Paytas from Peter Mon. But, like, if you're not watching Trisha Paytas like that, then how do you know what she does or doesn't do? Hard for me to... Uh, I don't know, just after everything that has happened, uh -huh. it's hard. Like, Frenemies brought out her true colors, in my opinion, it, and I thought... Sure, it did, but it was what was already happening on her channel regularly. Frenemies was going to help people see her in a better light, but I feel like it obviously did the opposite effect. I feel like Trisha Paytas gets away with literally everything bad and disgusting and racist and homophobic mental illness shaming body shaming she gets literally she gets away with everything well, well first of all she's not getting away with it these days her views are way down people she's not getting away with it this is this is why amber lane compares herself to other people because she's like oh trisha paytas is getting away with it trisha paytas does all these bad things and get away gets away with it no there are, there are drama channels making commentary on trisha paytas too so to say she's getting away with it she's not people are also holding Trisha Paytas accountable and her views are way less since Frenemies ended. I don't know. I don't I don't like expressing when I don't like someone. I personally feel bad for it. Um I feel guilty. I feel like I should be sorry I don't like you. Oh my you, you, you don't like to say that you don't like somebody, but you will happily talk shit about Becky for the first, like, 10, 15 minutes of this video. Cool, 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 cool. Oh my god, do you need me to, like, buy you a meal? Do you want me to buy you a new purse? Like, I am that type of person. I feel bad when I dislike people. I like to give people benefit of the doubt. But I just can't. I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. So next segment is random oh, facts of the fuck day. This. I personally love fuck the fact this. that I have this cute little book. Fuck it this. Is facts that sound this this book is finally reemerging, and fuck it. I hate this. Fuck all of this. Like bullshit. This is supposed to be people asking you to talk about what is so raw in your life, whatever that means. Why are we reading from a book? I love bullshit. So, I have already told you in a past video the first fact on here, which was hippopotamus no, is No, I'm skipping over this. Excuse me, ma'am. 
Okay, you guys, we can't have a so raw wannabe podcast uh -huh. from Wish.com without some rumors. All right, so let's, let's get to the rumors, bestie. The the Lindsay Lohan rumors. I'm tired of rumors starting. I'm sick of being followed. First rumor is Amber Lynn is suing her city first oh. fault. <laughs> I, there were some people that tried to send me a screenshot of something from a Facebook post somewhere that suggested that there was somebody, that, the, there wasn't even a name attached to it. Whatever name was there was like blurred out. And it was somebody like asking for information on how to sue the city. So I don't and won't be talking about my ankle or anything to do with what? It, I whether it's healing or I won't, I won't be talking about it because I made a whole video saying I was done talking about my ankle, but I will be talking about it right now to address this rumor. This is the bullshit. <laughs> what do you mean you won't be talking about it? You're currently doing it right now. You could have just not included this whole question, this whole rumor in in this video, but you yet you're here. It's not healing, how I'm doing, what appointments I have. We ain't doing it here. Okay. But there is a rumor that I am suing the city I live in because I fell. Is that even a thing? <laughs> I, I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> so no, Amberlynn is not suing the city why, for falling. Why wouldn't that be a thing? You're Don't play dumb, girl. Don't play dumb. It, that is definitely a thing. I don't think that you're suing the city myself personally, but... <laughs> But don't play dumb, like you don't know how that could work. No, I have no reason to sue the city. I was not paying attention. I was walking, blogging, you know, living my best life. Foot went in a whole situation type deal. That has nothing to do with All right, with so the let's city. stop talking about the ankle then. To Next me. question. I don't sue Next people. rumor. I've never sewn people. Your ex-girlfriend's sister did threaten to sue me, and you were happy to pass along that message. But let's keep going, girl. Let's. You said you're not going to talk about your ankle. Let's move on to the next rumor. Didn't happen, won't happen. The rumors y'all come up, up with, huh? So the second rumor, of course, there's another rumor. I was going to try to do just one rumor. Let's, let's so go. Raw, What's the second rumor? There's another one that's going kind of hot right now. Amber Lynn and or wifey got the subreddits taken down. You guys, I have been on Reddit maybe three times my whole life. Uh-huh. Once was to read something about me. The two other times was to look up the hashtag 1500 is enough or is plenty. I don't even remember, which is like people who just eat 1500 calories and they like talk about it or whatever. And oh. my friend told me about it. So I looked it up and I was like super obsessed. Okay, get to the point. Did wifey do it? Did wifey do it? Are we calling her wifey again? So I spent like two hours one day just like Never went on there again. Maybe one other time. Um, but I <laughs> never went on there again. Well, maybe one other time, but that that's not important. Only ever went on subreddit, uh, my subreddit, like once. So, no, wasn't me. Wasn't wifey. I could fucking care less. Was it the fact? Was it wifey? Okay, so we do have permission to call her wifey again. We do have permission to call her wifey again. Okay. This continuously happens where you guys come at me for a subreddit being taken down about me when I had nothing to do with it. I, d I really so don't. To show that you are bullying. What oh. you are doing in that subreddit is not okay. It is harassment. It is daunting. You are bullying. Is I, don't, I honestly don't know. I remember the original Amber Lynn Reed subreddit happened. It got taken down and then all these other little subreddits picked up and then like one of them became the, the one people went to. I don't know that much about Reddit's like terms of service or how it works. So I don't know if it is getting taken down for what she's saying it got taken down for or not. I think it's silly that she's acting like she doesn't know why people would think that potentially she would do it. I don't think she did. I think Reddit's from, from I guess what I have experienced in the past, like I used to use Reddit heavily, like right after I graduated from undergrad. So like 2012, 2013. And when I did use it back then, I just remember things being like so super specific in terms of like following Reddit's very specific rules. And like if a subreddit wasn't doing exactly what was going on in terms of service, even like the smallest infraction, they would get like 
punished for it, whether that was taking it down or some other kind of like punishment. <laughs> but, but I honestly don't know like what rules it did or didn't break, but I don't think Amberlynn had anything to do with it. Maybe wifey though, who knows? Also for her saying that she's only, let's just also put this out there, for her saying that it's only been, she's only gone on that subreddit like once, I don't know how she can say what is or isn't happening there, you know? Like, for her to be like, oh, it's definitely bowling, it's definitely this, it's definitely that. Like, I don't know how she has any evidence to say that if she's only looked at it once, you know? Not to put any conspiracy theories out there. I'm just saying, though. It is clearly not allowed on Reddit.com. So no, it wasn't me. It wasn't my fee. It was a higher power... So, bad next choices. Next segment is called bad choices because what? you know we've all had them. We all make bad choices. <laughs> Have we? So I figured. She, you know what? So these fucking cards. This, this really is taking it back to the fucking live stream era. Whenever she started just doing live streams all the time with Becky, they would pull out these dumbass cards. It was the most boring thing. You know, she had the self awareness to reference how boring live stream era was, and yet she's still bringing in some of the most boring parts of the live stream era to this. She said, "Let me bring in this fucking." Stupid Stupid ass card game. I would answer three of these bad choices. No, I'm probably gonna skip have it. Other cards in here. And we have a unless she says just something real entertaining. Consider this probably skipped. So that is actually the end of the first episode of. Oof. Okay, well, as predicted, the the card game was boring, so you probably didn't see any of that. But we've made it to the end, y'all. We've made it to the end. So raw, I don't know. Is this something you guys enjoy? It, it I is. Know it. I enjoyed it, so I will it, be continuing. It was it's dumb. Actually going to you, you'll be continuing as long as people don't make you hate it and make it something you no longer enjoy, and then you'll rage quit. So uh, uh, please feel free, <laughs> feel free to be honest with her about whether or not you like it, because I thought this was so dumb. You may as well have just called it a Q and A. You added in all these other stupid little bits to try to make it not just a Q and A, but those were the worst parts of the video. The bad choices part, awful. The random fact of the day, awful, awful. I hated it. Be every single Tuesday, you guys are talking shit about Becky. Hated it. We're gonna get one of these. I'm pretty sure. Not sure what time on Tuesday because I might. Oh, it's an every Tuesday on the thing. Day of or the day prior, so I'm not sure like what. So are we gonna get content outside of this every Tuesday? Is there gonna be something that's not this every two like outside of Tuesdays? What time? But it will be Tuesday. Um, and as for the rest of my content, oh, she's answering my question. Here currently, we're gonna figure it out. Might be a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little sprinkle of this, a little sprinkle of that. But for Tuesdays, we are set for so raw. Cause the video's so raw, you guys. Oh, Fuck. was it? This video is so was it? raw, you guys. Fuck. I don't think there was anything raw about that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, thank God we're finally done. We made it through the whole thing and I'm not like dying of heat. So this fan is working and that video was ridiculous. Leave Becky's name out your mouth. I guess she didn't say Becky's name specifically, but I'm sick of it. We all know you're talking about Becky. I'm done. Let's move on. Let's move on. The Becky era is over. Don't don't be out here talking about it. You can talk about your human experiences, but you won't even talk about your current human experience with wifey because you want to protect her privacy. It's fine to throw Becky under the bus, but not wifey. Okay. Anyways, that's all I have time for today. I hope y'all enjoyed this video as much as, as I enjoyed making it. I've literally never said that before, but I did have a good time today. If it's your first time on my channel, make sure to subscribe below. Hello, hit the bell button so you get notifications, leave me a comment, hit like, click share, follow me on all of my social media including my gaming channel and also my Twitch and go check out my merch store. Uh, I had so much fun today, I hope you did too and I'll see you all next time. Bye!